save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you knew, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, yes, we're going to continue with the Army of Satan series. Today, part eight, social media addiction, Illuminati agenda. Guys, I'm not going to keep you waiting. We're going to jump right into it. But before we start, if you like my videos, leave them a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And please let me know in the comment section which videos I should react to next. Thank you very much. And now with no further ado, let's have a look. <laughs> One billion of us own a smartphone, and we know how addicting it can be. One former Google Just employee says, this is no accident. Indeed, it is by design. And he became troubled by the relentless efforts of app developers to keep us glued to the gadgets. So the goal is to keep us on our devices longer. Why? For any company whose business model is advertising or engagement-based advertising, meaning they care about the amount of time someone spends on the product, uh, you know, they make more money the more time people spend. So the game becomes, how can I throw different persuasive techniques to get people to stay, to spend as long as possible and to come back tomorrow? I'm probably the worst person to speak about this because I'm running a YouTube channel. However, I really have to say, if I wouldn't run a YouTube channel, I would stay off social media completely. Matter of fact, usually I take every year one break at least of social media and even from producing videos. However, and I have to admit this, this year I didn't make this break. I didn't take the time off social media. I was so busy on YouTube connecting with so many people. It was amazing. However, I did not take my break. So inshallah, next Ramadan, I want to stay off social media completely. We will see. The, if the thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them to really understand it. And that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while um, because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. And that's gonna get you to contribute more content and that's sure. gonna get you you know, more likes and comments. I mean, it's a, it's a val it's a social validation feedback loop that, that it's like a, I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a, that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. And I just, I, th I think that we, you know, we, the inventors 
creators you know and it's it's me it's my yes and you have seen this absolutely spiraling out of control i mean where are we at right now youtube shorts 10 second videos TikToks. it's unbelievable that people do not understand that their dopamine system is being hijacked at first it was enough to get a few likes on facebook then you start watching youtube videos and they became full of jump cuts effects overlays bam 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 in your face because people are not stimulated enough any longer and now we're at a point as i said where we can't even sit down and watch a whole youtube video come on what is going on people need this constant dopamine input be it through social media pornography or even junk food yes junk food increases dopamine levels it is true as well and this is why thank god finally people think about dopamine detoxes Ultimately, you just have to go into nature. The, That's it. You know, Kevin Sisterman, and Instagram, it's all of these people um, understood this consciously, and we did it anyway. I think in the back, deep, sure. deep recesses of business. our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. Yep. And I would encourage all of you as the future leaders of the world to really internalize how important this is. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. Deep. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth, and it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian. Yeah, Africa. and moreover, as he said, you're getting those dopamine spikes and therefore you're not motivated to do something with your life. Because ultimately, in nature, in a more natural environment, you would get dopamine hits as well, but they would be much more subtle and they would be bound directly linked to an accomplishment. So think about this. You go out and you hunt. You've been starving all day. You get a group of men together. You hunt down an animal and now finally, at the end of the day you bring this prey home your family is waiting for you with open arms now they're gonna cook the meat etc etc so this of course a dopamine rush if you will but that is bound to direct action and nowadays you don't need that action you just click on something and you get the dopamine hit same applies of course to sexual intercourse back in the day in the good old days people had to court a woman and then marry her and then they would get sex as a reward but now Nowadays, they can get sex, of course, through prostitution and whatnot, but moreover, just by clicking on their smartphone and then masturbating. It's absolutely pathetic, absolutely disgusting, but this is what it boils down to. Listen, you need to understand who your enemy is in order to be able to defeat him. This is an agenda not for you, but against you. This is a global problem. Sure. So, we are in a really bad state of affairs right now, in my opinion. It is... It is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. It is due to social media that we have this whole ABCDEFG crew running wild. Don't you understand? Those ideas get fueled on the internet. Those ideas are spread on forums, on TikToks and what not. Those ideas are not natural, but they're infesting the minds of the young people. I don't have a good solution. You know, my solution is I just don't use these tools anymore. You know, bad actors can yep. now manipulate large swaths of people to do anything you want. It's just a, it's a really, really bad state of affairs. And we compound the problem, right? We curate our lives around this perceived sense of perfection because we get rewarded in these short-term signals, hearts, likes, thumbs up, and we conflate that with value and we conflate it with truth. And instead what it really is, is fake, brittle popularity. Yep that's short term and that leaves you even more and admit it vacant and empty before you did it depressed you don't realize it but you are being programmed 
Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. This reminds me of a parable of Jesus from back in the day in the Bible where he said the slave is freer than any of you and the slave is freer than the rich man because the slave has one master. However, the rich man has as many masters as he has vices. And this is what it boils down to. Addiction, of course. If you have addictions, you're indirectly worshipping those addictions. You will never be free. This is why Islam is a solution. Yep. Yes. To control someone through social networks doesn't necessarily mean that you have his videos or pictures. No. Rather, you can also put some programs on those social medias to change his behavior, to destroy his morals and beliefs, and to take him away from the real values of his life. This is what they are doing with you. They make your mind busy with these things so that you don't have any time for other important issues. Or in other words, they make you a slave of the system through these networks. And through those specific tools, Shaitan steals your time, because there's almost an infinite scrolling tap which traps you and sucks your lifetime. In fact, you're that sitting alone, much. busy with Infinite, those yeah. networks and think that you're connected Never with ends. the entire world. That's how they divided the community and ruled the societies. The Prophet says in the hadith, لَن تَزُولَ قَدَمَ عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسْأَلَ عَنْ أَرْبَعَ The feet of the son of Adam will not move, will not go away from to anywhere until the person, he or she, are questioned about four things. عَنْ عُمْرِهِ فِيمَا أَفْنَاهِ about his or her life, how they spent it. As many of these people who become so addicted to social media and, and become like, oh, I, I have 5,000 followers. You know, they, they start having a sense of false accomplishment. You sure. start talking to them after five and a half, or as the report said, nine hours a day of being on the internet or social media. You ask them, what have you done for your daily life? What positive thing did you do for your family, for your children, for your parents, for your neighbor, for the ummah in general? And they have a sense of, you know, I, may, I, I, I posted something on Facebook and I got 200 likes. Mm. And they walk around like they have done some real serious accomplishment. Yes, that's very correct what he said. It brings us back to what I mentioned previously that you don't really have to accomplish anything anymore, but you're still getting this dopamine hit. Moreover, by getting those likes and getting the clicks and whatnot, people really believe that therefore what they're saying is correct. I'm getting more clicks, therefore it is right. But if you look, and I don't want to post them here, if you look into YouTube and you check which videos have the most clicks, Man, they're the filthiest videos that you can imagine. It's a miracle that they are on YouTube. Actually, it is not, of course. If I would upload something similar, I would get demonetized, deplatformed, banned, shunned for life. However, there is an agenda at hand, of course, and those videos that are being promoted that generate the most clicks have the least amount of value. Quite the opposite, they're the filthiest one that will obstruct your mind. So you really have to understand that it is an appeal to majority fallacy. Just because you have more followers, more clicks doesn't mean that you are generating something of value. Quite the opposite. In this day and age, the blind masses will click on all kinds of stupidity, ridiculous, disgusting, trash videos. So ultimately, to really understand the truth, you have to go against the blind mass. Amazes me, man. And our lives have become so attached to it that it brings unnecessary almost, stress right? and unnecessary have to get prepared. Sadness. He's going to scream again. Why? Because you're so caught up with how other people are living their lives that the only thing you can see in your life is what's missing. And you stop seeing what you have. And really I find it interesting. And again, forgive me, now these are just my personal. Have we become so shallow that I need to let the world know where I am, what I'm eating, where I'm going and who I'm with? Yeah. And have you yeah. become so shallow that you need to follow people now? I don't understand. Like people take selfies. Just, just had lunch. <laughs> well, like, you know, look, it's funny, but wallahi, you don't understand 
the effects it has on individuals, even marriages. Sure. And I'm telling you, you know, and maybe this is a bit extreme, but I believe that people are living a lie. No, it's not extreme at all. You know, girls who take these, even guys now, what's the post called? You know, when you do this, this dark face. What's, 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 what? I don't know what it's called, but anyway, so, you know, people who take selfies and then put it up on the internet, I find it amazing. If you're so sincere, why don't you take a photo as soon as you wake up in the morning? You know, while you still got those things in your eyes. No, the picture is selected. Of course. The picture is selected. And I always take Yeah, a moreover, for me, it was so crazy when Instagram started. People started posting bikini pictures. Super weird, even from a Western standard. Because I remember back in the day, if somebody would show you their family album, they would show you some pictures and then the beach pictures. Yeah, oh, oh we're in a bikini here. And they would just fast forward, of course, not show you those private pictures. But nowadays, if you click on Instagram, honestly, you can't even be on Instagram without sinning with your eyes. It's absolutely impossible. I, for example, like to check out motorbikes. So check out a motorbike, check out a second motorbike. All of a sudden, I see a naked woman sitting on that motorbike. It just spirals downwards. So what it boils down to is the loss of shame. People are not ashamed anymore to show themselves naked on social media. This prostitution. But they're not understanding it because they're not standing on a street corner they're taking those pictures from the comfort of their home and instagram etc just warm those people up to this ultimately led to only fans now you have people regular people man prostituting themselves doing all kinds of filthy acts on only fans and now they're saying don't kink shame me up until now, it was fat shaming, body shaming and whatnot. All of a sudden, it's king shaming. So if you have some sort of fetish, you can live that out openly now. And they do not see what's wrong with it. It's absolutely insane. I've seen certain YouTubers that I thought are just normal people. All of a sudden, turns out they all have OnlyFans. And they are family YouTubers. So the mother has an OnlyFans. The sister has an OnlyFans. The brother has an OnlyFans. They're all prostituting themselves, showing themselves butt naked on the internet. And they don't see anything wrong with it. Honestly, I'm getting goosebumps talking about this, but not the positive kind. Because it is so repulsive. And I always take a photo when I'm on a holiday or I'm having something, right? Yeah, of course. And I, I and 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 I go to extreme efforts to show the world that I'm living the life. But in truth, you're not living the life. This is the guy there scrolling you're on his phone. You're extreme efforts to this. show the world that I'm living the life. He's talking about social media and those but guys scrolling But in truth, you're on his not phone. living the life. <laughs> you're a human being like everyone else. And what tends to happen is, and, and, and really, wallahi, I say to people, even if you are happy, don't show it to the world. Because yeah. people will start to hate on you, they will start wishing to have what you have, For and sure. they will start wishing that Allah takes what you have and gives it to them. But my brother and sister, Allah didn't give you that. Allah says, I'm not going to question you on things I haven't given you. Why do you make things difficult on yourself? Brothers who drive around all day, working all day, looking at every woman that comes his way, admiring and lusting and Allahu Akbar, and comes home and he says to me, man, I'm sick of my wife. Yeah, of course you're sick of your wife. Had you spent 10% of the time you spent looking at other people's women, had you just spent that time looking at what Allah gave you, maybe you would appreciate her as well. No, that's good advice, man. But you don't. You're looking at the things that don't belong to you. You look at things that are not yours. You're trying to live the life that is not yours. Wallahi, just live your life. The social networks no, are anymore. one of the biggest fitness. They're just this. consistently portraying what life could or should or would be is supposed to be. And this is why people cannot concentrate on their own lives anymore. Even if you look at reality shows, the Kardashians and whatnot, people always aspire to be somebody. Back in the day, it was the royal family and they cannot let go. And nowadays we're at a point where we have normal people, regular average people, not celebrities, on social media showing their lifestyle, beautifying it 
and all of a sudden people get the idea they have to be just like them. Time. Yes. Because they are the easiest way for your enemy to manipulate you and to take your whole attention on meaningless desires. Yeah, bro. And this is what Shaitan loves the most. Just take in mind that whenever you post something or write something which reflects immorality, a great number of people will see and read it. And when every sure. individual sees it, there will be a sin deposited in your account. Yes, and moreover, you don't only have to post immorality, but even if you look at it, please keep this in mind. I've seen so many people, so many men posting and giving those social media women attention. Many comments are even negative. People say, oh, why do you expose yourself on the internet? Guys, listen. The only way to get rid of that filth is by not clicking on it, not looking at it. It is not only about what you are posting, it is about what you are actively watching, what you are putting your attention on. If you look at such filth, it will generate more clicks. You are part of it. And because it generates more clicks, those women will produce more content. And you will be responsible for that in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For sure. You know, subhanAllah, there is a word that we might say and only the people here could hear it. But there is a word that you might or we might type on the internet and you don't know, you have no control how many people will read that, how many people will actually see that. You know, it's not only what we say with our tongue. Because what you write, somebody else is going to read. What we write, somebody else is going to repeat. For sure. You know, we've seen people in Muslim countries leave Islam, become atheists as a result of engagement with social media like Facebook and Twitter and chat rooms. They go into a field of fitna that they are not equipped with knowledge to combat. Also, when you like a post which contains immorality, Dislike will cause the database of that social network to push the content to a greater yes. number of people. Like, dislike doesn't matter. Now I'm just imagine click how itself. big your sin will be if you like or share those contents. Sure. Just watch them is enough. Not only liking and sharing. I don't. Let's see it. <laughs> we're not gonna yell at now. We're, of course not. <sighs> It is a warm hoodie. Yeah, no, it's a thick hoodie. We, it's um, it's a company hoodie. We print our mission on the inside. What? Oh, oh my really? God, the inside of the hoodie, everybody. Take a oh. moment. What is it? Making the... Making the world more open and connected. Oh, my God. It's like a secret Ooh. cult. <laughs> Look at that. Making the world open and connected. Stream graph. Platform. They're always shoving it into your face as if they don't know that it is a cult. Ho, 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 it's like a cult almost, and everybody's clapping. Yay! Weird symbol sheep, in man. the middle that is probably for the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. It's all a joke. No, no, you haven't seen that. It's not true. Mark Zuckerberg. According to Department of Homeland Security reports, Facebook has replaced almost every other CIA information gathering program since it was launched in 2004. After years of secretly monitoring the public, we were astounded so many people would willingly publicize where they live, their religious and political views, an alphabetized list of all their friends' personal email addresses, no phone reason. numbers, hundreds of photos of themselves, of uh, and even status updates about what they were doing moment to moment. It is truly a dream come true for the CIA. Much of the credit belongs to CIA. It's unbelievable. Back in the day when we were visiting Macedonia, my parents are from Macedonia and we used to live in Germany. It would be a different world. We would go to Macedonia, we would meet again, see all of those people, reconnect. Nowadays, villages in northern Macedonia, remote villages, all of them are connected through Facebook and they're updating every day what they have eaten, what they drank. It's absolutely repulsive. What is the worth of this? It takes away so much value of life, man. Agent Mark Zuckerberg, who runs the day-to-day -day Facebook operation uh. for the agency. The decorated... Guys, one day I'm going to disappear from social media. Mark my words. Agent, codenamed the Forever. Overlord, was recently awarded the prestigious Medal of Intelligence Commendation for his work with the Facebook program, which he has called, quote, the single most powerful tool for population control ever created. Of course. 
Let's read this. These networks are designed to keep you alone and away from the reality, to produce depression, to feed you with immorality and misinformation, to cause fitna, to destroy your beliefs, to cause major sins, to prevent you from freely thinking, to break the privacy and to entirely control you. Satan's perfect trap. Oh yeah, oh yeah, my dear brother, it is correct. And of course, mass itself is something enjoyable, something light. Don't worry about it. Just click on it. Put your time for real values and don't let Shaitan steal it. Yeah, this is always heartbreaking when I see kids with smartphones, man. Or tablets. Save your innocent children from this trap. Please do. The Prophet says, Imagine the moment of death where the tongue becomes so heavy and you can't say subhanAllah, bihamdi. You cannot, you, we spend so much time on social media and, and what's strange enough is that subhanAllah, many of us have the Quran on our devices, yet the day and the two and the three go by and we don't open the Quran. Okay. We should be scared that this app, the Quran app that we have on our cell phones or our iPads will come on the Day of Judgment. The Prophet وسلم, on the Day of Judgment will, will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Oh my Lord, Muslims have neglected this book. Muslims have neglected this book. If you don't control yourself, others will control you. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very long, so we're gonna cut it off here. Just a few last words. In the end, the video maker says as well, stay connected. Of course, it is an uphill battle on those major social media sites because most content gets deleted. If I look back, for example, on the content that I produced, be it on certain diets, be it on certain diseases, be it on certain politics, all of those videos have been deleted completely. I cannot talk about it whatsoever. There was no profanity in those videos. There was no vulgar speech, nothing. It was just information that YouTube didn't want you to see. And this is why my channel was shadow banned, copyright strike, demonetized and whatnot. It was a constant avalanche of those social media giants. They don't want certain information to reach you. <laughs> That's really what is happening. But nevertheless, we're still trying to communicate with you via this flawed medium. Anyways, that being said, at some point, I want to become more active on Rumble. Hopefully that will work. In the meantime, however, you can find me on Telegram as well. The link is in the description box below. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.